We can see your chance. We can see ya. Smelly butt. Good morning folks, welcome along to the vlog. Always adjusting the camera. So this morning, I've got a sniffly cold and a really itchy nasal passage. Mm, indeed. So, um, yeah, it's gonna be awkward to do pieces to camera without having to have like tissue stuffed up my nose, tissue, tissue. So anyway, today's job is cleaning up the aftermath from the big casking project last week and uh, there's still one more tank to indeed empty out. And then the three tanks behind you, these three here, these three here, they have, uh, these are the ones that we used to harvest the yeast on a couple of weeks ago. So I actually do want to take a second generation out of these tanks as well. We might have a little peek under the microscope at it because I've bought a microscope for this job and uh, we'll see how healthy the yeast is and uh, whether it's worth taking a large sample and repitching again. Hopefully I'll get around to that today and then we've just got to put the rest of these casks in the cold room and put the kegs on to carbonate and uh, move these bottles and what have you. But yeah, I don't know why I've picked up a cold because I generally feel pretty good, folks. And uh, you might like to hear that tonight I feel fit enough to actually go for a run first time in four months. So I think the knee is really on the mend. It's taken all autumn and the end of summer actually to get this back to ch -ch -ch square one. So fingers crossed on that front. So I'm gonna push these bottles down over yonder, get them out of the way. Oh, I also need to order some grain. I'll take you down. I'm not pointing at my snotty face, folks. So uh, yeah, whilst we have a fair bit of grain there, let me just turn this light on. There we go. Yeah, we've got plenty of grain here, but this is all this is all specialty malts. So we've got crushed wheat here. Uh, there's one bag of extra pale, mild malt. Because I was going to play about with some other recipes, and then here we've got all of the uh, the mini kegs. That's our address if you want to send us anything, folks. Hey, freebies. So, um, yeah, these kegs have got to come off, they're carbonated. I've got another four to put on over here. I've got to do a malt order with total brewing supplies and tidy this lot up. Let's get on with it, chance. Well, I'll tell you what, folks, the temperature's definitely dropped in here a little bit, so I want to be putting gloves on today when I put my hands in this paracetic acid because it's so cold. So, oh God, I should have got a bit of sauce. Uh, let's see. Right, so yeah, what I'm wanting to do is at least take the yeast out of the bottom of these three fermenters. So I've got a supply to pitch in the next batch of beer that I'll be making. Probably next week. I don't think we'll be brewing this week at all. Um, and because this is now second generation wet yeast, of course it started its life as dry yeast in the, uh, in the first batch of beer. But now it's wet yeast because it's wet. So what we're going to be doing is testing for viability with the uh, microscope but I can't do that until the HEMA cytometers which I've ordered from eBay have arrived so we may have to just take a sample and wait for those to turn up and then do that another day so uh, at least we can take this and store it in the containers until next week and carry on doing what we've got to do like dry hopping and everything else and then we can come back and have a look at a sample of this at a latter dat. So uh, 
Yeah, at the minute we've got some paracetic acid in here and I've also got some in this handy dandy spray bottle which I keep incrementally spraying everything down with so this is all nice and sanitized for taking that yeast sample that we want so I'm just putting together the whole system that's probably a little bit too deep for my hands to get into now oh no we can get there there we go that's that and yeah, I need that tri clamp. Come on. Don't be awkward. There we go. So yeah, we're spraying it all down with sanitizer. We're gonna set up the uh, sample taking equipment, which I think you saw on a video last week maybe. And then, when this is all put together, we can then go ahead and take, take the jars that we're going to be taking the samples in and, uh, and sanitise those as well. There we go. So we've got an adjustable leg on the bottom of this. I don't know if you can, you can see this. So we're taking the weight off the elbow back there so make sure everything's kind of nipped up we'll close that valve down now and then all that's left to do is put the other end on which has another tri clamp fitting and then an elbow to redirect, redirect the uh, the yeast to the collection vessel. There we go. Beautiful. We just face that up the rest of the way. There we go. So that little bit of gubbins is ready. Let's take my gloves off and we'll give you a little bit of a closer look of exactly what we've got here. And then we'll go and get, we'll go and get our collection vessels, which are just basically Tupperware containers. But that's what we've got. We're coming straight out of the tank, through the side glass, through the diaphragm valve, and around to our collection port if you like so this is what I'm going to be collecting the yeast in just basically a clip lid Tupperware container it's only the second time I've done this but it worked on the first time the beer is good so it should work again so we're going to take this off we're going to pop that in the acid it's already been cleaned it just needs to be sanitized and then with the top here you'll notice that I've got a little bit of text on there and that's just telling us exactly what this yeast is so it's not sale generation one all the info's down here so we took it out on the 18th of October and generation two marked with what guile what beer and of course today's date because that's the collection date and then we can keep a record of this yeast and how far along we're going to go with it and by keeping a an eye on it through the microscope and keeping an eye on the beer flavour profile and its attenuation will be able to see if and when any of the variables or mutations from this yeast strain come in and when that happens we'll get rid of this lot we'll buy a fresh packet of dry yeast and we'll start the whole process over again so I'll pop the lid in there to sanitise as well. We'll give that, give that a minute. And then uh, while we're waiting for that, we'll drain off the sediment, the slurry from the bottom of the tank, which is probably going to be a little bit of true from the brewing process and all the uh, cells that died early. 
uh, from from the pitching process we're going to go for the middle of if we look at the cone here everything kind of down here we're going to ditch and then kind of from there to there is probably good yeast and then anything above that is going to be low flocculating yeast the kind of yeast that wants to stay in suspension so we'll we'll not collect that either we want the stuff in the middle of the yeast cake okay so i'm going to make sure we just crack this valve slightly just to let any air escape so we don't get a bubble glug up the tank and then we're going to open the main valve and there we go <laughs> did you hear that i just caught it and then if we just come across here and focus down a touch oh my goodness it's a little bit stiff matron and we'll just let a bit of a bit of the yeast out and this is kind of the stuff that we don't want Aha. I don't think these tanks are going to be conducive to yeast collection by the looks of it no they're not so here's the problem I didn't know if this was going to occur or not but what I think is happening is uh, we're going to have to abort the mission folks because the cone on this tank is not as pronounced as the cone on the other tanks therefore the beer has punched a hole through the middle of the yeast and unfortunately that means that we're just getting beer out of the tank and not the yeast cake that we want so if you look at these tanks over here you'll see that they've got a really deep 60 degree cone on the bottom of them and the tanks that we made over here because I couldn't achieve that 60 degree cone when we made these tanks we didn't have the equipment to do it we have to put more shallow base on there therefore we can't harvest the yeast out of these three tanks we can only harvest yeast out of these tanks so that's a lesson that we've learned today but you've seen the setup and you've seen basically a live mission abort so at least we know that now and well at least we can see that the beer is nice and clear and ready to come out even though we can't get the yeast right we've got the bottles moved back out of the way and Gemma's just uh, finishing up casking this beer there's Susan Boyle up there look check that out and at the minute I'm just in the uh, cold room I've just dry up some of the beers so I'm going to look how much stock we've got I've only got one more box of mosaic but we've got lots of other stuff like Centennial Amarillo Atanum I have to start using some of these up Equinot I want to do a beer with that actually so there'll probably be some new beer recipes coming up soon Cinco I'm going to have to pull my finger out on that anyway let's get out of here it's a little bit noisy right so uh, yeah I'm still waiting for more stuff to come in for the post I thought maybe that haemocytometer had arrived this morning but now what came instead were a few of these borosilicate and my flasks and some uh, glass pipettes a 2 mil and a 10 mil and then also we've got a couple of these pipette pumps or pipette pumps and these were off eBay as well pretty cheap never seen these before I used to use the crappy old rubber ones but uh, these are much better here's one of them in action look yeah spot on so hopefully we'll get the yeast bank up and running soon and we've got some 
little stand up test tubes to take samples and what have you and I think that's about it today that's arrived rotating spray balls came the other day as well I don't know if I mentioned that so the plan is to have one uh, to change out the spray balls on the cask washer with these rotating ones at some point anyway I digress launch them in so a slight detour at the minute we're up at uh, Dixon Windows so we're gonna loan Dave the van for tomorrow because theirs has broken down rather inconveniently so we're just uh, taking all of our junk out of the van putting it into the car well that's a bit of an odd one folks I'm kind of finishing the vlog in a position where I didn't expect to today walking home in the rain with uh, don't worry I'm only walking from the car but uh, I'm gonna see if I can get a run in while there's still some light so I'm gonna end the vlog now a uh, bit of an odd one I know but we'll come back and we'll pick it up where we left off tomorrow we'll see you then cheers